Another story you tell there related to the Pearl Harbor was, was it the Yorkton? Uh, Yorktown, Yorkton, Yorktown, oh. the, the, big, uh, the big ship that mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh sunk and they, they resurrected it. They thought it would take 90 days. They did it in th th three days, was it? Well, she can't, the Yorktown came into Pearl Harbor after the Battle of Carl Sea early mm -hmm. in, uh, in May of 1942. And, it, mm -hmm. and they estimated it would take six months to get her back out to sea. And they did it in three days. So it came in damaged. It, wasn't, it came it, in damaged, it, yes. It wasn't there on the Pearl Harbor Day itself. No. Okay, you know, I, so I'm glad you clarified that. But, I mean, a bomb had actually landed, gone through several floors of the, of the ship and exploded yes. internally. It wreaked terrible destruction on the ship, and they repaired it in a few days. With miles and miles of electrical cable, and right. I mean, it's an amazing story. Uh, she had to be back out at sea for the Battle of Midway, right. where, three, where two of our carriers faced the entire Japanese fleet. And that was one of the great miracles of World War II. Yeah, you know, you, uh, you, you draw maps. I probably won't find it now, but um, you, you have maps and pictures. Uh, and when I, when I saw the map about Midway, I thought, how in the world did they ever manage to, uh, to, to, to win that? How did they do it? Well, it's, it's so miraculous that human beings could not have orchestrated that victory. Yeah. The, uh, the American... Uh, dive bomber squadron happened to arrive on the scene at the moment that the Japanese air cover was dispersed and uh, they looked down and there was the Japanese fleet and in two minutes they dropped the bombs that tore the heart out of the Japanese Navy uh, in two minutes but uh, it was amazing it so happened that a few minutes before the dive bombers showed up a torpedo squadron came in at low altitude to do their long tortuous torpedo runs and every one of those planes was shot down yeah. torpedo squadron eight one of the uh, one of the most apparent futile attacks in history but their sacrifice brought the japanese fighters down and so when the dive bombers showed up there was no air cover and they did their destruction and that that two minute period. when you tell that story you mentioned the one uh the one pilot managed to get through all of the flak and everything and dropped right. his torpedo made a direct hit and then he crashed the other side of the uh yeah. of the of the ship but en ensign gay I, that, ensign gay was george the gay yeah. george gay but I, I i thought as i was reading that um i wonder what his thoughts were in those milliseconds he had oh we've failed but they hadn't failed yeah they he, they he he went on after the war uh, after he left the navy to become a speaker. He traveled the country speaking about defense preparedness. Mm. He, he went into battle in an obsolete airplane with an obsolete torpedo that didn't go off when, yeah. it, when it struck the Japanese yeah. carrier. And that was his message for the rest of his life. Don't ever send our men into combat again without... Do you know how, he, do you know how he survived? Like, did the, who, who pulled him out of the water? Do you know? He was picked up by a... Uh, a Catalina, a PBY aircraft, a seaplane later. So Larkin Spivey is the author of these two amazing books, both devotionals and histories of the Second World War and the Vietnam War, Battlefields and Blessings, and uh, Stories of Courage and Faith, Faith and Courage from the Vietnam War. And they're available at our e-store, crossroads.ca. 1-800-265-3100, crossroads.ca, log on, or call us at 1-800-265-3100, and you'll get more information about the cost, and we'll ship it out to you ASAP. Great reads both. Thank you, Larkin. Thank you, Jim.